Hey everybody, this is Steven from PopCultureMaven.com and we're back with this week's new comic book reviews and it's a pretty big week, folks. Uh, a lot of new number ones this week. Uh, so so there's there's that and and some re and a lot of returning stuff. So it's just, it's a big week. We've had a, a couple or three, you know, smaller weeks. So, um, so let's get right to it. Uh, first up, we have Fantastic Four, number one. Uh, written by Ryan North with artwork by Iban uh, Cello. So uh, here, here's the thing. Fantastic Four has always been a really tough nut to crack for creators because even though they're a superhero group, really it's the, really the key to the success of the Fantastic Four was always about family. So, so a lot of creators have tried over the years and, and, and some have been more successful than others. Uh, Walt Simonson did a really nice run. Of course, John Byrne did a really good run. Uh, Mark Wade did a really good run. Uh, but, but I'd say, uh, really the last, you know, really for quite a while, it's, it's the book has really struggled to find its voice. Um, that's not saying that it, it's been bad. I think it just really has never connected. So, uh, when I heard that Ryan North was going to be taking over the book, I was very excited. I was, I'm a really big fan of his um, his work, especially the Unbeatable Squirrel Girl, which is, I think, one of just absolutely just it's it's surprising that Marvel kept going with that book for so long. Uh, it, it's really wonderful. And then uh, last week he did Secret Invasion, which was surprisingly good. So for me, I had, a, for me, there was a lot writing on this because I, like I said, I really like his work. And so the question is, could he, you know, would he be able to come up with really kind of a, a different take, but still keep what really makes those characters work so well. So what's really interesting about this first issue is it doesn't start off with the whole team. It starts off with the story of Ben and Alicia going on um, like this trip and they're just going to, to like this town. They just, they're just, it's, you know, they're just traveling and seeing things. So they go, they end up in this town and what's really interesting is they, so it's all normal. And then they get up the next morning and so they go to, to, to the office and say, you know, hey, you know, uh, there was there was something that happened, and the guy's like, "Wait, you didn't check in, so uh, did you break in and uh, you know stay in a place? I, I don't remember seeing you." And what they discover is that this town, it's like Groundhog's Day. Every day, it 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 goes back to the same day over and over again, and so they end up, you know, they they stay in the town, and through their research, they figure out that this one guy who um, basically had had broken up with this girl or the, she had broken up with him. And, and so he basically had wished he could do it all over again. So literally he's creating. So once they figure that out, they go to him and try to, you know, say, well, it's, it's okay. You know, heartbreaks, one thing, blah, blah, blah. So they do go and they, they do this. So you're just reading this and it's like a really great story, but you're like, okay, what does this really have to do with like the Fantastic Four? I mean, there's Ben and Alicia, but what, what does this do? And then at the end of the issue, I won't reveal, you know, I'm not going to say what happens, but obviously something happened in New York. There is something major happened. We, we don't know. There's obviously an aftermath uh, shot of what has happened, but we don't know what has happened. So it's really interesting how he set that up because once again, the, 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 just the Alicia and, and Ben Grimm story is really entertaining. It's, it's really fun. It's really nice. It's, it's very sweet, but then there's this dark thing that, you know, like this cloud hanging over, like what has happened, what has happened in New York and what's happened to the team. So it's really kind of a unique way to start this book and i have to say that i really really was impressed with it um once again north he, the, the script is great and everything and plus the way he kind of you know reveals that like sort of twilight zone ending of like you know where it really really flips the switch on like 
what is what is where this book is going to go we don't know but it's quite fascinating like oh crap what what what's what happened and where where's it going to go from here uh so once again the the story is really the story both stories are really good uh you know in the sense of it's leading up to the next issue uh uh cello's artwork is really it's a really good looking book he's really a good artist um and i think in a lot of respects this first issue um it really shows off his talent because it's a lot of it is i mean there's some action sequences but it's really a lot of dialogue and in talking and he really once again there's a lot of visual emotion that uh has to come across in the artwork and he just it nails it i mean it is a really good looking book i'm very excited to see where north and uh cello are gonna uh, take this this story because this first issue is really good i really recommend this uh it, it fingers crossed that that they really take this book to the next level and and take it but you know really take it uh to to really something that's exciting to read again uh, I'm very excited. So definitely high recommendation this week. Uh, next up, we have Urban Legends number 21. So there's uh, there's four stories. So the first one is Batman and Robin, uh, written by Anthony Falcone and Michael Cho, with artwork by Michael Cho. Uh, then there's the Rene Montoya story, uh, written by Julio Anta, with artwork by Miguel uh, Mondesia. Uh, then there's Arkham Academy story written by Dennis Culver with artwork by Hayden Sherman. And then there's a Batman story uh, written by Joey Esposito uh, with artwork by uh, Vasco uh, uh, Gor Gorgiev. So really, uh, the main reason I picked this up is obviously for the Michael Cho story. Uh, that is really wonderful. The cover is absolutely, I mean, it's amazing. The, the cover just, uh, and, and, you know, he has that wonderful retro style, uh, you know, that art deco style, uh, that also, you know, is very, very similar, uh, to, to what Darwin Cook did because they both are, were inspired by, uh, you know, that art deco style of like the sixties. And, uh, it, it's just a fun little story where there's, there's the, uh, there's this driver for the bad guy that is able to outrace the Batmobile. And it's, and so, so then Batman figures out how to build a different Batmobile to, to chase them. It's really just a fun, fun little story. And it's just, it hits all the right beats. It's a, it's a nice, good, you know, kind of short story. And, and the artwork's absolutely amazing. So you have a fun story and, and really great artwork. For me, that this, this story alone is worth buying uh, this book. That's the main reason I bought the book. Now, the question comes down to, are the, any of the other stories good? Now, the, the nice thing about the, Ray, uh, the Rene uh, Montoya story is that it's, it's a standalone story. So it's, it's, so, um, she has been offered uh, to become commissioner of Gotham, but the story really has to go with her past of her becoming, uh, you know, her, her first days as a cop and how, um, and what it is, is uh, there's, there's this, uh, uh, these, these two policemen are, you know, kind of frisking this guy and he, uh, what it is, is they're filling their quotas, which goes back to her past of her just trying to survive in the police force and it's very it's it's a very subtle but very fascinating uh story uh delving into her past i really like it uh anita once again the story is really good by anita and uh mondesia's artwork is nice uh the arkham academy is uh really interesting uh what it is is um so they're they're kind of rounding up the kids of the villains and they take them to arkham academy and where they where where they have to wear these you know uh villain or you know outfits uh costumes and so what it what you find out is that they're being there to be trained as as villains apparently uh this is the first part of a uh three part i think three part story so really this is just the first part and then the batman story is the second part 
But w w without reading the first part, what it is is uh, Martha and Thomas Wayne are back. And the question is, is of course, is this them? Uh, they, because they're, they, they basically been brought, uh, it, it, it's basically a time travel story and it, it apparently uh, it is them. Um, I, I thought it was nice and everything. The art was, was pretty decent and everything. I, I, the, the, really what it comes down to the, with those two final stories, um, you know, like I said, I really bought this for the Michael Cho. The other stories were nice and everything. Um, but, but I don't think for me that there's enough to can you know really to go beyond uh you know picking up the next issues for this uh but because like i said the really main draw for this issue is the michael cho and i really do recommend it just for that the other stories are fine and and you know none of them were clunkers so that's that's a plus uh next up we have traveling to mars number one written by mark russell with uh artwork by roberto uh Meli. Uh, so what it is, is, uh, there's this guy, uh, so what Roy Livingston, he's there, he's being sent to Mars. The reason he's being sent to Mars is because the Rover has discovered that there's huge pockets of, of natural gas and in Mars. So there's enough there to like power the earth for like, you know, 300 years or something like that. So what it is, is at first uh, everybody's fighting like, you know, and, and it almost causes wars like, you know, and then everybody, it turns into who can get there first. And so what it is, is this, this small meat company has decided to take their fortune and send Roy to Mars. And what it is, is Roy's dying of cancer. So, but while he's, uh, when he's in, uh, you know, in space and anti-gravity, the cancer does, it doesn't go, in, it kind of goes into remission where it just stops spreading. So, because this is a one-way trip. So basically he needs to get to Mars to claim the gas, uh, for, for this company. Uh, so that's really what it is. And there's, uh, so what it is, it's him and two robots. Uh, if you've ever seen, um, uh, the, the 70s film uh, Silent Running, uh, it really reminded me that you know, there were three little robots in this one. There's only two. But really, this this sets up his story of, uh, you know, how he really just was, you know, his life wasn't that great and everything. And he's so he's he's being paid $10 million. It's actually going to go to like a beneficiary. I think it, it's it's going to his mom, uh, but he can't tell anybody what he's doing. Uh, so that's kind of the setup there. It's really fascinating. As you know, I'm a really big fan of Mark Russell's and this is kind of a departure for him, but I really like it and what it does and what he does. He really, when he writes a story, it's really about character. And that's what this is really about that. Um, it, it's really kind of like, you really get to know Roy in this first issue. And that's really why this book works so well is because you really you really care about him. And plus the the story of, you know, trying to go to Mars, whoever gets their first wins, uh is quite fascinating. Obviously, uh there's going to be challenges I'm assuming along the way that there's going to be other people, you know, that are traveling that he may or may not run into. So that'll you know, once again that's a guess on my part, but uh, we'll kind of see where Russell takes it. And the artwork by uh, Melee is actually really nice. It's a good looking book and everything. I really like this book. I think it's worth checking out it, it, because it's really a character driven story, which I I really do like. Uh, next up, we have Quick Stops, number one, uh, uh, written by Kevin Smith. Uh, and um, well, start with artwork by uh, Jeremy uh, 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 Sim Simser. So what this is, is, um, once it, it actually came out last week, I just, I didn't get a chance to review it last week. So we're, we're doing it this week. So what this is, is, um, so Holden who wrote, you know, basically is the comic book, uh, uh, art writer and artist for the comic in the movie chasing Amy. And so what it is, is he's at this convention, i.e. like a San Diego comic con convention and he's telling the story of how, he, so some, you know, he he he's talking about, you know, the that they make the movies and stuff, 
And so somebody asked him a question, how did you develop the comic? So apparently at one point Holden worked at the, the, the quick stop for uh, just like a few months. And so he, how he came up with the idea was that Jay and Silent Bob come in, uh, get, you know, they, they smoke out in the cooler and he, he basically imagines them as like superheroes. Of course, there's, you know, an homage to uh, Frank Miller's Dark Knight. Uh, and, and so that's where, you know, he says his inspiration, uh, started. So it kind of ties into the, the, uh, Kevin Smith's askew, uh, universe, uh, movies. Uh, but it's also kind of, kind of more comic oriented in the sense of it, it, it has a, has Holden who, who, you know, wrote and drew the comic that, like I said, is in chasing Amy. Um, I, I think the, the question comes down to if you're a fan of like Kevin Smith in the, in the films, I think you'll like it. I think if you're not, uh, either super familiar or like you like the films, but not overwhelming. I think this is really, you know, a book that kind of preaches to the choir. I, I don't think it's bad. I think, I think it was okay. It didn't, it didn't really, I felt, uh, bring, a whole lot new to the table in some respects. It wasn't like, um, cause I know, uh, some of the clerks comics kind of filled in like stories, like in between type stuff. Uh, but, but like I said, it, it's, it was okay. It just didn't, it didn't wow me or anything. Uh, the artwork by, um, uh, uh, Simser was, it was okay. It was, it wasn't bad. It was nice. Uh, but it really just, it was, it was okay. I did like the fact that it was done in black and white. I think that actually was a nice little benefit to the book because it gave it kind of that throwback, um, kind of clerks, you know, to the original film because the being in black and white. So I think that was, uh, uh, you know, a nice touch, but overall I think it's, it's really just for fans of, of like the movies. Uh, next up we have Kyan number two. Uh, written and drawn by Wes Craig. So uh, Kaya has now met up with like the lizard gang. And so they're heading north uh, all together. So really it's just a continuation of, of that story. Uh, what's interesting is is the one, uh, the one lizard that's really been giving her a hard time. They, uh, so they, in their journey, they get, uh, tr uh, they, they lose their food, uh, while crossing the river. So they have to, they have to catch, uh, uh, you know, they have to catch food for, so they can, they can eat. And really that's what this story is about. What we find interesting is the one who's been giving her the most crap, uh, is, is, you know, he's kind of got a secret and, uh, I, I don't want to reveal it cause it's a nice reveal and it really, uh, I think really gives a lot to that character where, you know, in the first issue, he was just very, you know, gruff and one dimensional. This issue really kind of fills that out and gives him kind of an, a really nice story. Um, I, once again, I really enjoy this book. It's a nice all ages book. Now I wouldn't say that it's really super young, but I think for, for preteens and up it, it's fine. Uh, once again, the story is really interesting. I really like Craig's artwork and it, it's just really a fun little book. I think it's well worth checking out. So, so definitely if you, uh, it, it pick up uh, both issues, but, but I really did, uh, I really have been enjoying this so far. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see where uh, Craig takes it from here. Uh, next up we have the, the new golden age, number one, uh, written by Jeff Johns. So, uh, there's multiple artists. There's Diego, uh, El Torgui with J uh, J.P. Meyer and Scott Hanna, uh, Jerry Ordway, Steve Lieber, Todd Nock, Scott Collins, uh, Victor Bogdanovich, uh, Brandon Peterson, and Gary Frank. Uh, so what this is, is really this is a precursor to the new Justice Society um, book that's coming out. And also the companion book, the, the Stargirl book. Uh, book that's coming out. I believe it's coming out next week or the week after. So what this is, is really bringing the justice society back into the DC universe. Cause they've been gone for a while. Uh, so really what, what this kind of is, it's, it's really, there's, uh, these stories are kind of past, present and future. So you have kind of the past, the original, you know, kind of the original, you know, say 40s uh, Justice Society. You also have a young uh, Helena Wayne, 
uh, who eventually becomes Huntress. And that really would go back to uh, like the 70s, uh, uh, you know, period of the Justice Society. Then there's like the 80s period. Then there's a future period. And how it's all kind of tying together is is Dr. Dr. Fate is, you know, basically sees the future. He sees the future of like the, the kids and there's some there's somebody that is basically stalking them throughout the the years so it's that that's kind of really once again this is kind of a setup uh book but i did like a lot it was a nice introduction to to the justice society i think uh some people you know if you're not super familiar i don't know that this is kind of the best place to start in some ways but i think if you know that it's really a launching pad for these upcoming two books, I think as long as you know that, then, then you'll be okay. I think they'll, you'll, if you're not super familiar, I think you, it's not that you're going to be lost. You're not going to kind of know everything, but I will say that Johns does a pretty decent job of kind of setting everybody up, like saying, this is who this is. And this is who this is. So it, it kind of gives you like enough to, to like get going. Uh, one of the things I really liked was in the, uh, after the story, they had, uh, new uh, who's who's pages that are were supposedly lost pages. Uh, who's who was a, a guy that came. Uh, it came out of the eighties uh, from the crisis where uh, a crisis during that period where they what they did it was like an encyclopedia of all DC characters, and so each you know would would have an artist do a picture of the the character, and then there would be like a text of like what they do and their story and all that and their backstory and all that stuff. That was a lot of fun, and there were a bunch of diff different artists. I will say oh, the one thing that really really was great about this was the actual artwork in the book. Uh, all of it was really nice, it really, and of course I love uh, you know I'm a big fan of Jerry Ordway, and so it was really nice to see him. He he did a uh, number of uh, uh, Justice Society books back in the day. So, and he's just really a good artist. And, and like I said, they, they all did a wonderful job. It's a really good looking book. And, and even though there's different styles, I never felt that like any one, like, you know, it was too much of a jump uh, to, to one or the other. Uh, so, so I, I liked it. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of the Justice Society, but I think if it's something you're interested in, I think it's definitely worth picking up. It's got a good story. And of course I will say there is, uh, cause Jeff Johns did it in doomsday, um, uh, the doomsday book that, uh, Watchmen obviously, uh, you know, cause we know that they're back in the DC universe. Uh, there's, a, a, they, he alludes to that they are going to be part of the story. So there's that too. Uh, next up we have dark ride. Number two written by Joshua William Williamson, uh, with artwork by Andre, uh, Bresson. Uh, so what this is, so, so we have, uh, Arthur Dante who created the, the, uh, the park and, uh, you know, the horror theme park. And then, so there's his, his daughter, Halloween and Sam, his, his son. So Sam really kind of runs the park and the empire and everything. And as we found out in the last issue, one of the new employees basically uh disappears now i won't you know if you haven't read it um i really won't I, I would just say he went on a ride and it did not turn out well um so so what it is is so halloween has kind of come back she she really wasn't involved she's kind of a social uh, uh influence social media influencer uh but she comes back and she has this idea of creating this new land that's more of a like a theater uh you know, where they put on like shows and stuff like that. And so she, that's like what she comes up. She's like, I already talked to dad. He thinks it's a great idea. Sam's not sold on it, but since dad said she could do it, uh, there's that. But what's interesting is the, that, um, with the missing, uh, with, with the, uh, the, the kid that's missing from, um, the first story, uh, is that his sister has has come to the park as an employee because she's she's trying to figure out what what has happened why he's you know why he disappeared and so so there's that we also know that there's like something kind of going on in the park kind of like there's 
maybe a p possessions or demons that are act real demons that are in the park so there's that kind of going on so really the second issue just kind of it continues to build on what that first issue did which i really did like the the first issue and the second issue i don't think it's quite as, as exciting but it does continue the story so you know it's not so much that it goes down it's just that we're seeing a little more exposition and stuff but but once again i do like what william williamson is doing here i think it's a really good concept uh breston's artworks it's a really nice looking book so i think it'll be interesting to see kind of where they go i, I like i said i like the second issue and it, it 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 does a lot of interesting things with um with the park and then kind of the mystery that's going on with the park so so that's all going on so so i feel, still think it's worth checking out uh next up we have gospel number one right, uh, written and drawn by will morris uh so what this is is that um sorry i have my notes here uh so there's uh uh, m uh, m uh so there's pitt who is a storyteller and so there's a the there's uh this this woman that he knows uh matilda uh and what it is it's it, this so this story it so there's different periods but it mostly takes place during the reign of king uh king henry the eighth and so what it is is of course you know this is the period where religion you know kind of really took off and everything and there's you know christian sort of christianity kind of kind of kicked in big time <coughs> excuse me so so what it is is so she is, see that's kind of where this is kind of where i struggle with the book is i kind of get what morris is doing here but it was a little convoluted where it's like he introduces you know he introduces uh uh, Matilda, he introduces Pitt and they kind of tell stories and we kind of, but then there's also a bounce to like present day where this guy is telling the story. Um, and then it starts off with, uh, somebody telling the story that Pitt has written, but exaggerating the story. So, and then at the end of the issue, there's, there's an explosion at the church and it looks like the devil's there. So it's, 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 I was really kind of confused with really what, you know what where morris was kind of going with the story it wasn't that it was bad it was just like okay you've introduced these characters and they're there they kind of do this and then there's this the weird thing that we go into the present day and then we come back and then the devil like the devil's there and i'm like okay i i like the concepts in in some of the ideas but it's really like the story was for me it was a bit convoluted i i don't think it was bad i just don't think it was it, it just wasn't focused. I think that was kind of the problem. It's like, you know, he threw all this exp exposition, but then it kind of doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, and the, the artwork's actually nice. It's a good looking book. I just, for me, I just, I just didn't really get into it that, that well. So it kind of, for, I, I don't think it's bad. And I think for some people it might work, but for me, uh, it, it's kind of a pass this week. Like I said, I don't think it's bad. I just think it, it, for me, it just wasn't focused enough. Uh, next up we have minor threats. Number three, uh, written by Patton Oswalt and Jordan Bloom with artwork by Scott Hepburn. So, uh, so once again, uh, stick man has killed, uh, kid dusk and the, um, the 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 justice league team is out for blood they're basically going after every villain trying to find stick man and he cannot be found so so we have our kind of d-list um villains there you know that have kind of come together and they've been trying they've been going to avoid you know the the heroes because they're just they're taking villains out left and right and then you, so they actually find a way to do, they actually find stick man. And so let, let's say we don't think this is going to end up going well. Uh, yeah. But uh, once again, it's kind of interesting how in a way that, that Oswald and Bloom have, you know, in a way turned the villain team into really the heroes of the story, which is quite quite fascinating i mean it's not necessarily original but i think i think the thing that's really interesting is that 
it's it's there's something about a ragtag team that that always tends to work well and and i think that it's just it it's just kind of fun it's a fun book and and also like this issue we kind of learn uh the origins of a couple uh, each issue has kind of we learned a little bit more about each of the members so it, that is really a really nice addition to the story because you have the main story of them trying to find Stickman. But also we kind of, as we go along, we're learning about the characters, which is a nice touch. Um, I, I'm really, I'm, I'm kind of digging this book. So it'll be interesting to see how it all ends up. Uh, Hepburn's artwork's actually nice. Um, there were, uh, there was a couple, there was a sequence that was a little on the rough side, but it was a flashback. So it may have been, more of a visual look that he was doing but otherwise the the art's nice and and the story's been really good so i i'm in i'm still enjoying it and i want to keep going uh next up we have the night the night and the lady of a play one shot number one written and drawn by jonathan luna so what this is is so there's there's this uh so it's set in medieval times this guy went off to war you know, he writes his wife and everything. And so he's coming back. And as he's coming back, he he goes through these woods and he 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 basically is is finds this witch who has trapped three of his his uh, friends. And so what it is, is that she uh, basically she enchants them to to have sex with them. And that's, so that's what she does. She takes care of him and everything, but it's like, you know, that's, that's what she does. It's, it's so, so the story goes along and, and so he, he makes a deal with her that like, okay, I'll stay with you if you let my three friends go. And so it's, you know, I don't want to kind of give away the ending, but it's, it's really fascinating because it's a very, first of all, it's a very simple story. You know, it's, it's kind of like, it's, it's not really a, you know, like she's not really good or bad. It's more of like a story about kind of gray areas. Let's, and it also is like, uh, it's also like how, you know, the soldier is able to like, you know, like, he offers he he offers himself to save others you know it's like you know what a hero does and like i said the story's really simple and everything but i actually really enjoy it and it's nice because it's a one and done story uh i i do like jonathan luna's uh work and and i think this is just like i said it's it's not there's not it's not a big heavy story but it's a good solid story with really nice artwork and like i said it's a one and done so that's always a win so i think it's worth checking out i had uh next up we have love everlasting number four written by tom king uh with artwork by elsa uh chartier so so each issue has it, it, so this is the interesting thing first of all this is like a big big just romance comic uh, which is really great because we haven't had romance comics in I don't know, like 800 years. So what this is, it's the same, uh, it's the same girl, but like kind of in different stories. And what this one is, it's set basically during World War II, and so there, she's a singer in a bar, and so what it is is, you know, she entertains the troops, and then uh, she to make extra money she she's it's not sexual but she's friendly she'll talk to the guys and if if she kind of keeps them there drinking she she gets a bonus and so what it is she ends up uh she meets this one soldier and he immediately you know he falls in love with her so what it is is they of course they go off on a mission every time they come back from a mission they've they've lost a team member so it's it starts off where he doesn't drink and then each time he comes back you know it's it's the wars put more pressure on him mentally and physically and so one time he comes back and he asks her to marry her and she's like i can't marry you uh you're a really nice guy but it's just you know and so it's just it just keeps getting and it, it's really once again this this story is really fascinating because each like i said each issue is kind of on you know it is standalone uh but this one was really i i think really interesting because a couple of the others have been like two part stories like two separate stories this one was one big story and i think it just really uh 
you know, when you, you kind of have a war story and then, you know, kind of this like torn, you know, two torn lovers, basically. Uh, it, I really enjoyed this issue. And, and like I said, I think the one thing I do like about it is that each issue does kind of stand on its own. And, and I really like that. I really like this issue a lot. I think King, this, this was really one of the best stories I've read and I've actually enjoyed the other, other issues. And, and, uh, Chartier's artwork is really, it's really wonderful. It's a really good book. If you haven't picked up any, you, you could easily pick this issue up and get exactly what they're going for. It, it really is irrelevant. It's kind of the same, uh, it seems, you know, like the girl's the same name and everything, but it's just kind of different stories with like the same type of character, not necessarily the exact same girl, but, uh, like I said, they're doing a really wonderful job. I really like this book a lot. Uh, next up, we have Dark Crisis number six, uh, written by Joshua Williamson with artwork by Daniel Sampre. So, what you know, we're kind of coming to the end. Uh, so we have Deathstroke is kind of the dark taken by he's the dark side, and his team has been taken over by the dark and Pharaohs. Uh, is you know behind the whole thing. So what what we also is the Justice League who quote unquote died. Yeah, right, they're dead. We've known the last few issues that they've been trapped in alternate dimensions, universe, multiverse, all that stuff, and they they uh you know are trying to find their way back. But what what is happening in like you know Earth Prime or Earth One, whatever is the young heroes are having to like they're this is kind of like the big battle to to save the multiverse uh and they're they you know they throw all their forces against the the dark the the, the dark evil side and that's really what's going on in this issue i don't want to give it away but it, you know once again you know exactly what's going to happen you you kind of know somebody somebody's going to come save the day uh but but like I said, I, I even though I'm I'm kind of for the most part kind of burnt out on you know big kind of event comics, this one hasn't been actually that bad. I have to give it to Williamson that that the story has actually been quite nice. Um I, I still don't think you need to read any of the like spin-offs and one shots and stuff like that. I think you know the 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 main story is here. Um, and I don't think any of those really, I mean, they, they say, oh, well, what, you know, this happened in that, but that's honestly, I've read it and none of that stuff felt, I never felt like it was missing anything by not reading these like extra one shots. So, uh, definitely you, you can just, you can read this, uh, Sam Priest art is, it continues to be really be, I mean, if you can draw that many characters and still make it look good, you know, if you, you've done a really good job. Like I said, it's it's not it's not going to be the most amazing thing you've you you've ever read, but it's a it's a pretty decent event comic, and I think on that 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 alone is is well you know gives it worth checking out. Uh, next up, we have Two Graves, number one, uh, written by Genevieve Valentine with artwork by Ming Doyle and Annie Wu. Uh, so what this is is uh, you have Amelia. Who, uh, so, so what it is, the, you have two artists. So, uh, one is doing like the past and one is doing the present. So we, we kind of start off with this, uh, with Amelia where she, she, she goes and she finds this guy who has murdered somebody. And so what it is, it really, what, what this is, it's, it's, it's a road trip with Amelia and the devil. That's exact or death. Not the devil, death. Sorry. Uh, so really, that's what this this book is kind of about. So you have like the present where uh, they're on the road trip, but then it kind of dwell. It shows the past where she is kind of work. You know, she's kind of working with death, as far as we can tell. Um, I think there's uh, once again. I I think having the two artists, you know, one doing the past, one kind of doing the present story, is actually really kind of a good idea. I, th I think because it really differentiates, Hey, this is, this is like a flashback, you know, this is present. I think the thing that bothered me a little bit is like, um, it really wasn't quite kind of clear on what's going on here. I mean, we kind of get that, you know, she's hanging out with death, but we're not, I'm not quite sure what it's going for, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but I don't know that I felt like I really was, 
really drawn into the story with that. I mean, I can kind of see, and I think there's some really good ideas that, um, that, uh, Valentine, uh, does here with the story, but I don't know that I was totally sold. I think, but, but I think it's, it's enough to give it a second, you know, give it a second issue to see where she's going to take the story uh, with this. I, I think, once again, I think there's some good ideas, even though I wasn't completely sold on it. I think it's, you know, once again, got promise, which sometimes is enough. And, and sometimes the first issue is not a, always a tell all of like where you're going to go. So. I'm willing to give it a second chance. I I did like Doyle and Wu's artwork. It 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 there's a lot of good ideas here. So I think if you're looking for something different, I think it is worth checking into. So you might, if you're a local comic shop, kind of flip through and see if you kind of like or are, are getting a good vibe off of it. Uh, next up, uh, we have Do a Power Bomb number six, written and drawn by Daniel Warren Johnson. So last issue, bit of a spoiler. Uh, so. We have Lona and Cobra's son. Uh, she's the daughter. He's the dad. So they lost the battle. So they they were out of competition. They they're not gonna you know because they basically went in to bring uh, uh, his wife, her mother back. So they lost. But the the twist here in this issue is that the the ones who won because they they have different agendas. See see uh, Cobra's son and. Uh, lona have the same they want to bring the same person back the other two had different so they basically just start beating the crap out of each other they kill each other <coughs> and so so in a twist even though they lost they have now won because the other team who beat them is dead so 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 they you know so the devil, you know, kind of the devil goes to them and says, hey, you're the winners now. And so they're like, okay, fine. Bring, bring, you know, bring my mom back. Bring my wife back. And he's like, well, there's a bit of a hitch here. It's like, I can kind of do it, but I don't necessarily have all the right tools. So basically he, he, he has lied to them. So now we find out going into, so the next issue is the last issue. And so they have to battle God basically because God can bring her back. They have to battle God. And that's where we end up. And you're just like, I, and the, the God that Daniel Warren Johnson is, has created is like, wow, he's going to freaking kill him. Uh, it, it, this book continues to amaze me because I'll be honest. I'm not a big wrestling fan. I mean, I just, but the key is that if one, the, the wrestling action is really, really good. I, I think you don't have to be a fan of wrestling to enjoy it because I think really it's about the action of it, not necessarily that it's wrestling, but really what has, has made this book is really the, the core characters and the, in the story itself to where that is what makes this book so great where the wrestling is for me is just really icing on the cake where that is a part of the story but for me not the main part of the story that that i'm enjoying i'm really enjoying the characterization uh the trials and tribulation that they've they're going through and they've gone through uh this book is really wonderful i'm a huge daniel warren johnson fan and this book i has been amazing it just gets better each issue and i cannot wait to see what the hell happens next issue? So if you've missed this at this point, I can imagine probably most of the other, I know they've had to go back to a couple a couple printings on the first couple issues. Uh, I know there'll be a trade of it. This book is wonderful. I, I'm really digging it. And uh, if, if you're lucky and they have all the issues, just go buy them because this book is damn good. Uh, next up, uh, Wildcats number one, written by Matthew Rosenberg with artwork by Steven Segova. So... This is uh, DC's bringing back the 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 uh, Wildcats, uh, Jim, which was under Jim, you know, was created by Jim Lee at Wildstorm, and so <laughs> here's the thing: I've read some Wildcat stories over the years, and and they're fine and everything, and and you know, I I think a lot of the characters are really interesting, and there has been uh, uh, DC has done some things with them, but but. I think they're trying to reboot them this time, uh, which is which is great. And I think it's a good theory. 
uh, the unfortunate problem is that I felt the story was really, uh, it wasn't that it was bad, but it really felt I was kind of dropped into the middle of the story. Um, especially there's going to be a lot of people who have no idea who wildcats are. The other problem you're going to have is like that, you know, so, so they're not going to know, they're not going to know any of these characters. And unfortunately, um, Robinson doesn't really do a very good job of kind of introducing him. And like I said, it feels like you're kind of dropped into a story that's already gone on, which is not really new reader friendly there. That's a problem. And then we really don't get to know the characters it's kind of like, okay, here's, here's Grifter, here's Diana, uh, Michael Cray. And then eventually Fairchild shows up and then it's like, okay, they're, they're going to this facility. We don't know why, but they're being told. And, and then we have like some DC heroes that show up, but it's really like, it's, it's not that the story's convoluted. It's just like, you kind of don't know what the hell's going on. And then if you're not familiar with these characters, you're like, okay, that's nice, but I don't know who these people are. I don't know. I don't know kind of what they do. Um, you know, I don't know what their powers are. So that really, that is kind of where this book just really kind of falls apart where it just it's 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 not new reader friendly and i can't imagine that there's you know that many wildcat fans to support a book that they may know of all these characters so um and then the other problem is segova's artwork's kind of okay i don't think it was terrible but it was just kind of like middling i mean it was decent artwork but it wasn't anything to really jump up and down about uh so so really this one this one was just a big wash this week. Uh, so I cannot really recommend it. Uh, next up, we have nice house on the lake. Number 11 written by James Tynan, the fourth, uh, with artwork by, uh, Al Alvarado Martinez Bueno. So we, we have one issue to go. I will try to explain this without spoiling as, as much. So, so Walter has, has basically, rounded up these 10 people but nora is has kind of discovered you know somewhat like she's kind of the yin to yang to walter and in, in, in really in some respects and so what walter was showing her was like the controls and we know in the last issue that like there was always like a, a setting for like if they like maybe they tripped and fell nobody they would not die they would always come back to life well so we know last issue, she turned one of the knobs the wrong way and somebody is now dead. So, so we've also, we, we, the, the, so the, also the 10 people are now learning that their memories are being wiped, that certain things have been, been deleted from, from their memory. And they're trying to like, remember, they're starting to remember stuff. And that could be with Nora playing with the controls. So, um, so really that's, that's what it is, you know, kind of what is, is going on this issue. Um, this book has been absolutely amazing. Each issue just keeps getting better and better. Obviously, if you have not been reading it, please don't pick up this issue because you're going to be really freaking lost. Um, but I cannot recommend this book enough. It's still really wonderful. Um, it, you know, if, if you get a chance, I know there's a trade of like the first six issues, there'll be a trade of the, the last six issues. Um, it, it just, it really, uh, I really love this book. Uh, Tiny's story is just really wonderful, uh, and, and mysterious and amazing. Uh, and the really big, the other big win for this is Martin Martinez Bueno's artwork. This book is gorgeous. It's absolutely stunning looking. Uh, he, he really finds, uh, in so many ways to, to really capture the wildness of, of like Tynan's story visually. Uh, this book is just absolutely amazing. I cannot recommend it enough. Uh, if for, like at the very least go pick up the trade of the first six issues and you'll see why this book is that good. Uh, but I, I can't wait to see where it, it goes next issue. I'm very excited. And finally, this week, we have Wonder Woman number 793, written by Michael W. Conrad and Becky Cloonan, with uh, pencils by Emman Emanuela L Lupacino and inks by Wade Von Grawbadger. Uh, and then there's The Young Diana Backup, um, written by Jordi Belair, with artwork by Paulina Ganchu. So... 
what this issue is, it's kind of a standalone story of, of Superman, Batman and Wonder Woman on the watchtower on the moon. And, uh, so it, it hasn't been abandoned, but it's kind of like, uh, uh, you know, been, been, uh, sh kind of shut down where it's just on low power mode, but they end up going there because there was an alarm that goes off because there was motion and there shouldn't be anybody there. They go there, they find some aliens that have been, uh, that had came to earth, but then they got left behind. And really that's the basic, basic story here. Um, it, it's, it's all nice story and everything. I mean, it, it's nice that it was kind of a standalone story in that respect, but I, I don't know that it really was, it was an okay story. Um, I, I, it was kind of, I, I did like, I did like th what, uh, Conrad and Clunan did where it really was a story about their friendship, which I actually really liked. I liked that part of the story and that was really amazing. Uh, but, but it's, it's, it's one of those things. It's not going to blow your, you know, blow your socks off or anything, but it was a nice, it was a nice, good story. And it was a nice kind of feel good story. Uh, it was, it, you know, there wasn't really, there's some action in it, but really it's about the friendship of the DC, uh, Holy Trinity. Uh, and, and on that level, it was fine. Uh, once again, I really like the young Diana backup. I, I think that Jordi Belair and, and, uh, and Paula Ganshu are doing a great job. I just, I don't feel that it fits with the main story. It's just, it's really a young adult story. Uh, you know, it's, it's kind of like a kid's story, but it's, it just doesn't fit with the main story. And it's a real shame because I think, uh, they're doing a great job in the book. It just doesn't fit. I, I, I feel bad every month that I talk about it, but, um, but we'll see, like I said, I'm, 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 I've been on the fence a little bit with the book. Uh, like I said, the story was good, not amazing. Uh, but if you want to read a standalone Wonder Woman story and kind of see what Conrad and Clunan have been doing and what, what kind of their, the feel of, of their writing, you could definitely pick this up and kind of, it'll give you a good idea of like their style of what they're doing with, uh, Diana right now. Uh, that's going to do it. As always, public service announcement. I get all my comics at Pulp Fiction Comics, uh, Long Beach, California. Ryan Skinner runs a great store there. Uh, Annie, Eduardo, uh, Derek, Wendy. Uh, it's, it's a great store. They offer uh, pull service. That's how I get all these comics. I get them every week. And uh, they also offer discounts on their trades and graphic novels. Uh, they also carry manga, which they also discount. Uh, they also have a um, uh, kind of a pretty gently used uh, section of stuff that's even further discounted. Uh, so you, there's some really good deals in there, but you never quite know what's in. in, in it's it's like the mystery. Um, and uh, so uh, once again, I, I you know they're in Long Beach, California. Definitely uh, check them out if you're in the area. It's a really good store. Uh, if you're li more in the LA area, there's Pulp Fiction, Culver City. Uh, same name uh, run by uh, Chris and her team, different owner. Uh, but once again, they offer the same, you know, they offer discounts and, and pull service and everything. Uh, both really good stores, but obviously uh, I'm the Long Beach kid. So, uh, but definitely uh, support your local comic shop. As always, they're the backbone of the industry. Uh, so it's very important that you uh, uh, support them. Also, during this time of the year, I know, you know, with, with all the stuff that's going on, plus also the holidays coming up. Please make sure that you pick up your books from your local comic shop. If you have a pull, uh, definitely pick up your books uh, because they pay for them in you know in advance when they show up, and it's your responsibility to to make sure that you pick pick up the books because right now is kind of a tough time for everybody. Uh, so don't make it harder on your local comic shop. So definitely uh, please support and buy your books. Uh, and as always, we end our show with be kind, kindness just goes a long way. Being kind is good for you. It's good for everybody. Uh, as we all know, the, the, you know, we all need a lot more kindness in our lives and, uh, kindness can start with you. Uh, so, uh, just take care of yourselves, be safe, stay healthy. Um, and that's going to do it this week. Thanks for watching. Sorry. It was a long one, but we had a lot of books to get through. Uh, but, uh, take care of yourselves. We'll do it again next week. And as always, please subscribe and to our YouTube channel 
and uh, share uh, share comments are always appreciated. Uh, but um, but please uh, uh, definitely follow our uh, YouTube channel. Uh, and uh, thanks for watching. We'll do it again next week. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye. Oh, this is Stephen from PopCultureMaven.com signing out. Talk to you next week. Bye-bye.